Hi, welcome back to Surgery Tip Clips. Today, I wanna to show you how a specialty foot can multitask. It's going to be with the lace applicator foot. And I've shown you some other specialty feet with different names that I've used for entirely different um, types of techniques. I showed you how to use the cording foot, not only for cording or welting, but also for overlock zipper insertion. And I've also shown you the blind hem foot, and we use that for picture perfect pin tucks. So today I'd like to show you the lace applicator foot, not for applying lace, but for perfect placement as far as flat locking goes. And um, in my series of tip clips, I've got a few of these different ones and be sure to subscribe to my channel, it's free. And that way you'll never miss a stitch. So let me show you and review the anatomy of the lace applicator foot before we go to the machine. I used the lace applicator foot when I did the flat locking on this center panel. And this was originally just one panel and then it was cut into three sections to offset the um, lines of flat locking. But you can see they're very evenly spaced. And the way I was able to do that was by drawing lines and then using the guide on my lace applicator foot to get each um, section perfectly positioned. So let's go to the foot and I'll show you the lines on my fabric and then we'll get going at the machine. This is the piece of fabric that I'll demonstrate on. And as you can see, it actually matches the fabric that I have on my uh, little pressing mat underneath. And I've drawn three orange lines on it. And those are gonna be my guidelines for flat lock. Here's the lace applicator foot for my machine. And you may have one for your machine that might look a little bit different, but I guarantee it probably works the same. Mine has a few indicator ridges on it. There are five right here, and those tell me that I can use this in overlock mode as well as cover stitch mode. If you're working on a four thread machine, you may just have two indicator ridges on it. But there's also one other little indicator ridge right on um, the guide that slides, and I'm going to loosen up this little screw to show you. And this little, gu this little indicator ridge is aligned with the guide itself. So it tells you exactly where the guide is in relation to your needle indicator ridges. And when you loosen this, depending on what you're doing and where you want your stitches to be and what stitches you're using, it will slide back and forth. For this application, I am going to move the guide slightly to the left of that right needle, just like that. And then I'm going to, actually I'll nudge it over just a hair. Sometimes you have to fine tune this and it's not anything you're doing wrong. It's just like when you use other specialty feet, sometimes you have to play with this. Now, this is not a hard and fast position for all fabrics, depending on the weight of the fabric and how thick it is, you may want to adjust that guide slightly more right or left. It just depends on the fabric itself. But for this, I think this is going to work out well. So let's snap this on the machine and show it to you in action. As I mentioned before, I have three lines drawn. And I did my flat locking on the first line and I pulled it flat, but then I thought I should show people who aren't familiar with how flat locking works, the fun of the whole stitch. So here's the first one. And on this one, I have uh, a 12 weight yellow thread in my upper looper. I had a kind of a grapey purple color in my lower looper and I had um, just serger cone thread in my needle. And you can see that this side produces what's called a reverse flat lock. You see, some people call it ladder stitches because they do look like little ladders. But um, the public side of this would be the yellow thread that's in the upper looper for the flat locking. So here's the way it works. It looks kind of funky 
Um, and sometimes the stitches may even look a little bit looser depending on your machine and how it stitches. But And people think there's something wrong with their machine. It isn't. It's loose because there's barely any tension, if any at all, on your needle thread. The upper looper has a very loose tension and the lower looper is tightened. And you'll want to check your manual for your machine to see what the settings will be. And when we go to the machine, I'll give you my settings. But here's the magic of flat locking. It's so cool. You, Once it's all stitched, you just pull it and it pulls nice and flat. It's just, it's a really fun stitch and it's pretty strong. I wouldn't use it for super um, tight garments or fitted garments for construction, but um, on bags and for a lot of different things, you can definitely use it in um, non-stress areas on garments. And I've used it lots of times because it's so pretty, but here's what it looks like flat and um, then I'd give this a good press. So let's go to the machine and actually see it in action. Let's talk about the setup at my machine. Now you will want to consult your manual for your machine for the correct settings. But for mine, I don't have tension settings on my uh, machine at all. So the way we bypass the needle tension is by threading it through the upper looper threading channel, but then I bring it across and into the needle the traditional way. My upper looper thread is also in the upper looper um, threading channel, and that is all normal. My lower looper is exactly the same as I always do. Now, on some machines, if you have a subsidiary looper or what they call an upper looper converter for some machines, and, and there may be other names for it on other brands, you can also do a two thread flat lock. But for today, we'll just show the three thread because that's something that is available on, I would think almost any serger, any four thread serger. So I think we're all set to go. I also have my stitch selector on D as in delicate for this particular one. And that tightens up the tension on my lower looper thread. I have my stitch length at about 1.5 and I'm using 12 weight threads in the upper and lower looper. So your stitch length is variable depending on the weight of the threads that you're using as well as the type of fabric that you're using and the look that you're going for. If you want more space between your um, stitches and a little more show through of your fabric, then just lengthen your stitch. And my stitch width is on the widest possible. I have my stitch finger as far right as the machine will allow it to go. So let's close up shop here and uh, show you how I actually do the stitching. I'm using the third line on this same fabric and you can see the first two are perfectly parallel. So I'm going to use the third line. Now, one thing you'll notice is that I did not disengage my knife. And that's because I have this little guide on the foot to protect the fold from getting clipped by the knife. But um, if you didn't have quite the same setup for your machine with the foot, you may want to disengage your knife. You just have to be very, very consistent about where the uh, fold is. And because I'm doing a flat lock and not a reverse flat lock, I am folding the fabric wrong sides together. This particular fabric looks exactly the same on both sides, but I'm calling this the right side. So again, it's folded wrong sides together. And I did not press a crease along the um, chalk line. I just want to leave that um, basically um, as a fold rather than a crease. And I'm bringing the fabric, the fold of the fabric right against the guide on the foot and um, pretty close to the needles. I've already chained off a little bit. So I'm going to put my pressure foot down and I find it easier obviously to get it in there with the pressure foot up because then it's the foot is not compressed and kind of closed up. So if I can reach my foot control, I'll be in good shape. Okay, so the 
main thing is just keep this fold right in line with this. You don't want to push it against it and you don't want to let it wander off to the left either. So you're just going to keep it in and stitch. So really the guide on the foot serves two functions. It keeps everything nice and straight, but it also protects from the blade. Okay, let me just clip my threads here. And let's take a look. Again, you can see before I even open this up that um, the stitching is perfectly parallel with the other two lines of stitching. And here's, here's that um, needle thread underneath. I switched back the purple thread to be in the lower looper. But let's just pull this thread flat. No matter how many times I do this, I still I still get a kick out of it. And it's such a pretty decorative stitch for embellishing. And again, that's part of the beauty of um, understanding how to use some of these different settings and feet and decorative threads as well for your serger. Because there are so many threads that are absolutely gorgeous that you might not be able to use in your sewing machine but they'll work like a dream on your serger. So again, you'll see how all of these lines are parallel. So I hope that you will try this out. If you have any questions or comments, send them in. And if you have a suggestion for um, a different use of a foot with a different name, send it to me and I'll be happy to do a serger tip clip on it. Thanks for joining me today. And I'll look forward to hearing from you. And again, if you have any suggestions for future tip clips, I'd love to hear them. But we'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.